What's up, YouTube? From a flying car to a massive flying boat with nine wings, we bring you 20 vintage flying machines. Starting off this list at number 20, we have a one-man helicopter. In the 1950s, the U.S. Army tried to create a one-man personal helicopter called the AeroCycle. The AeroCycle was intended to be operated by someone with just 20 minutes of instructions. The objective was to use the personal helicopter as a reconnaissance machine. Steering was controlled by shifting your weight, but the aircraft proved to be too difficult to control and after two crashes, the project was abandoned. Number 19. In 1936, Jess Dixon of Andalusia, Alabama got tired of being tied up in traffic jams, so he designed and built this novel flying vehicle. This combination of automobile, helicopter, autogyro, and motorcycle is powered by an air-cooled 40 horsepower motor. Dixon claimed his machine was capable of speeds up to 100 miles an hour. However, only one photograph is known to exist, and although it appears that the machine is actually flying in the picture, no records of the test flight still survive. Number 18. The Gerhardt Cycle Plane Designed by Dr. W. Frederick Gerhardt, this entry on the list has been called the world's first successful human-powered aircraft. The aircraft made its first flight in July 1923. During initial test flights, an automobile towed the cycle plane into the air and released it. Afterward, Gerhardt was able to maintain stable and level flights for short periods of time. The only human-powered takeoff of the cycle plane was a short hop of about 20 feet with the craft rising two feet off of the ground. Number 17. In 1931, Helen Alberti, an opera singer from Boston, turned from her thrush-like warbling to another phase of avian endeavor, soaring by arm power in a pair of strap-on wings. Using the local hills as a testing ground, she and a male pupil sprung into the air, fluttering their canvas propellers, and then promptly went into nosedives. You won't be surprised, but disappointed, to learn that Helen and the young lad in the photos did not, as fate would have it, take flight. Number 16, Leonardo da Vinci's hang glider, an invention inspired by bat's wings. Historians have recently attempted to build da Vinci's glider using materials he would have had available and found that it could actually fly with a couple of small modifications. The device shows where a man could actually lie into the machine with his waist inside the ring just below the wings. His hands would hold the two sticks coming down from the wings for directional control and a flapping motion would be powered by the man forcing his legs downward with his feet inside the two spurs. Da Vinci's sketches and the principles he discovered while developing his glider set down some of the most basic principles of flight. Many engineers and Leonardo lovers tend to agree that he is one of the founding fathers of the branch of physics which is now known as aerodynamics. Number 15. Otto Lilienthal was a German pioneer of aviation who became known as the Flying Man. He was the first person to make well-documented, repeated, successful flights with unpowered airplanes. Newspapers and magazines published photographs of Lilienthal gliding, favorably influencing public and scientific opinion about the possibility of flying machines becoming practical. Sadly, on August 9, 1896, his glider stalled and he was unable to regain control. Falling from about 50 feet in the air, he broke his neck and died the next day. Number 14. The Ader Avion 3. In 1892, the French Ministry of War commissioned Clement Ader, a French aeronautical pioneer, to begin work on a new airplane. Ader created a tractor monoplane powered by twin 20 horsepower Ader steam engines, which was completed in 1897. Ader attempted to fly the Avion 3 on two occasions. In one of these test flights, the aircraft simply ran around a circular track without leaving the ground. In his report of the trials, General Mencier, the official government witness, stated that the Avion 3 had not flown, but he suggested that the tests continue. Having spent 65,000 francs on the project to date, the Ministry of War refused to fund additional trials. Number 13. The Ornithopter in 1928, George White hoped to make man's first successful bird-like flight in history. The idea was to imitate the flapping wing flight of birds, bats, and insects. The frame weighed 118 pounds, was 8 feet in length, and had a wingspan of 29 and a half feet. It was made of chrome molybdenum covered with a non-inflammable transparent celluloid fabric having a tensile strength of 10,000 pounds to the square inch. 
Over six years, George White made a total of 21 secret flights. On June 16, 1928, White narrowly escaped death during the flight experiments, but he reportedly kept experimenting with his ornithopter into the 1930s. Number 12. The Cornu Helicopter The word helicopter comes from the French word helicoptère, which is derived from Greek literally meaning spiral wing. References to vertical flights date back to 400 BC, but it was Leonardo da Vinci's design of an aerial screw in the 1480s that was the first record of advancement towards vertical flight. However, it wasn't until November 13, 1907 that French inventor Paul Cornu managed to lift a one foot off the ground for 20 seconds in his Cornu helicopter. This was reported to be the first truly free flight with a pilot. Various other experimentations took place after Cornu's vertical liftoff, but it wasn't until the 1920s that early development of helicopters really took off. Number 11. Raul Pateras Pescara built his first helicopter in Barcelona in 1919. He modified this version several times, and in 1922, Pescara moved to France and succeeded in rising and hovering 4.9 feet in his 1,680-pound helicopter. On April 18, 1924, Pescara's perseverance was rewarded. He flew at Issy les Moulineaux for a little under half a mile. The helicopter had four pairs of blades turning around a totem pole rotor mast, and although the takeoff involved a lot of wobbling, his flight still lasted 10 minutes. Number 10. The Lee Richards Annular Monoplane during the pioneer years before the First World War, Cedric Lee and G. Tillman Richards built and flew a series of aircraft having a novel flat ring shape or annular wing. They built both biplane and monoplane types, and in 1913 their first monoplane proved to be an early example of a statically stable aircraft. The circular plane form allowed the wingspan to be narrower than a conventional wing, making the aircraft even more unusual for its period in being longer than it was wide. Although all prototypes were reported to be easy to fly, they all crashed during test flights. Number 9. The Cayley Glider One of the greatest inventors in the field of aviation was Yorkshireman George Cayley. He was the first man to move away from the idea that a man-made flying machine must have wings that flapped like a bird's. In 1804, Cayley designed and built a model monoplane glider with a modern appearance. The model featured an adjustable cruciform tail, a kite-shaped wing mounted at a high angle of incidence, and a movable weight to alter the center of gravity. Cayley redesigned and tested his gliders throughout the rest of his life, taking his latest known flight in 1853 at his estate in England. Many consider him to be the first true scientific aerial investigator and the first person to understand the underlying principles and forces of flight. Number 8. The Blériot 11 in July 1909, French aviation pioneer Louis Blériot completed the first successful crossing of the English Channel by air. This historic feat took a little over 36 minutes and earned him a prize of 1,000 pounds, equivalent to $144,000 in today's money. The monoplane he used for the crossing was called the Blériot 11. The Type 11 was initially powered by an REP engine and was first flown with this engine on January 18, 1909. Amazingly, a few of these aircraft are still airworthy. Granted, given the rarity and fragility of the type, the chances of getting to fly it are next to nil. But it would still be theoretically possible to enjoy the Blériot experience. Number 7. Alexander Lippisch's Aerodyne an innovative and unusual design that lacked wings altogether. Lippisch's Aerodyne consisted of an engine within a ducted shroud that exhausted through a pair of vectored cascades that provided both the propulsive lift when in VTOL mode and then shifted via a series of vanes to provide forward thrust while retaining enough of a downward thrust component to stay airborne without the use of wings. A conventional tail unit provided directional control while in forward flight. While no documentation exists that the Aerodyne took flight, it was tested at the NASA Ames Research Center's large 40-foot by 80-foot wind tunnel. Unfortunately, in 1964, Lippisch contracted cancer, ending work on the Aerodyne. Number 6. The Nemeth Umbrella Plane Built by students at Miami University in 1934, it demonstrated that even a circular wing could be used to fly a plane reliably. This aircraft had a parasol wing of circular form above a conventional fuselage and tail, and it was powered by a propeller and a tractor configuration. 
The original prototype was a tail dragger that used a round wing design. It used a lengthened fuselage from a 1920s Alliance Argo biplane and was powered by a 90 horsepower Lambert engine. At the rear, two ailerons were added to help the plane land safely at slow speeds. It was quite a success in its test flight and held some promise. It provided evidence that circular wing designs shouldn't be written off and paved the way for other successful experimental military aircraft. Number 5. The Northrop XP-79 Flying Wing Aircraft Built in 1945 by Jack Northrop for the U.S. Army, it was designed as a flying wing fighter aircraft powered by two rocket-fueled jet engines. The XP-79 had the pilot laying prone in the cockpit to take on the expected 500 mile per hour speeds. A pressured cabin would ensure survival in the estimated 40,000 foot ceilings that the plane would fly in. The body of the aircraft was constructed with heavy gauge magnesium. The Northrop XP-79 project was canceled after the single prototype was lost to an accident. Number 4. The NASA M2F1 this entry was a lightweight, unpowered prototype aircraft developed to flight test the wingless lifting body concept. In 1962, NASA management approved a program to build a lightweight, unpowered lifting body prototype. Test speeds on tow inched up to 110 miles per hour, which allowed the plane to climb to about 20 feet, then glide for about 20 seconds after releasing the line. That was the fastest speed that could be expected during an auto tow, but initial tests produced enough flight data about the M2F1 to proceed with flights behind a U.S. Navy C-47 tow plane at greater altitudes. The M2F1 program demonstrated the feasibility of the lifting body concept for horizontal landings of atmospheric entry vehicles. Number 3. The Caproni CA-60 Trans Aero Often referred to as the Nova Plano or Capranissimo, this prototype was a large nine-wing flying boat intended to become a 100-passenger transatlantic airliner. It featured eight engines and three sets of triple wings. Designed by Italian aviation pioneer Gianni Caproni, only one example of this aircraft was built by the Caproni company. It was tested on Lake Maggiore in 1921, but shortly after takeoff, the aircraft crashed on the water surface and broke apart on impact. Soon after, the project was abandoned because of its excessive cost. Number 2. The Moon Pod This lunar landing research vehicle was built by Bell Aerosystems in 1964 as part of the training for the Apollo project to land on the moon. It was designed for a vertical landing and takeoff and was able to briefly hover and fly horizontally before landing. Known as the Flying Bedstead, it used a gimbal-mounted vertical jet engine to counter five-sixths of its weight to simulate the moon's gravity, in addition to its own hydrogen peroxide thrusters to simulate the landing module's descent engine and attitude control. This aircraft proved fairly dangerous to fly, as three of the five were destroyed in crashes. It was equipped with a rocket-powered ejection seat, so in each case the pilot was able to survive. And topping off this list in the number one spot is the Avro VZ-9 Avrocar. This aircraft was developed by Avro Aircraft Limited as part of a secret U.S. military project carried out in the early years of the Cold War. The Avrocar intended to exploit the Coanda effect to provide lift and thrust from a single turbo rotor blowing exhaust out the rim of the disc-shaped aircraft to provide anticipated VTOL performance. Two prototypes were built as proof-of-concept test vehicles, but in flight testing, the Avrocar proved to have unresolved thrust and stability problems that limited it to a degraded, low-performance flight envelope. Subsequently, the project was canceled in September 1961. 